There is a lot of controversy surrounding bread today. Is bread really harmful, or is it still possible to eat it? Or can only certain types of bread be eaten? In this video we will answer all these questions, so watch it till the end. If you want to be healthy, put a like and we'll get started. Some say that bread is the head of everything. That you can't live without bread, that everyone needs bread. Someone says the opposite, that bread is evil and it should be excluded from your diet. But there is a third side. So, marketers offer, as they call it, useful bread. And which of them to believe? How are things really? And so, first of all, we eat bread, of course, not because it is harmful or useful, but simply because so historically and culturally formed. Our ancestors ate bread because it was the most accessible food for them, and we have been used to eating bread since childhood. And literally only in recent years, nutritionists and researchers talk a lot and give arguments in favor of the fact that you still need to give up bread. But is this really the case? First of all, bread comes in many forms. Let's break down the main types. The first type is white bread, the classic wheat loaf. It must be said that this type of bread has the highest glycemic index. The problem with high glycemic index is that it's pro-inflammatory. We've heard many times that sugar should be eliminated, precisely because it provokes inflammation. Or because our aging and the formation of many chronic diseases comes largely from micro-inflammatory processes. And foods with a high glycemic index are one of the main causes that influence this. But there is still a downside, and the fact is that white bread is usually made from refined flour, and as a consequence, there is very little fiber, as well as vitamins and minerals. So, in essence, it is, as a rule, bare calories. There's also yeast added to it. They, unfortunately, contribute to the removal of calcium from the body. And also white bread is not recommended for people with gastrointestinal diseases, in particular gastritis and stomach ulcers. The next type is yeast-free bread. Dietitians consider it a healthier alternative. Its caloric content is already lower, and the glycemic index is also lower. Also, unlike white bread, you can find a good portion of vitamins, in particular, for example, B vitamins, various mineral salts, and it also contains precious fiber. I have already said many times that a healthy adult needs to eat about 30 grams of fiber per day, and in practice, as a rule, most of us, if we do not think about it, we do not reach the standard. Therefore, fiber, of course, should be added. As you might have guessed from the name, yeast-free bread is bread that did not use yeast. On the one hand, it's good to give up yeast since, as I said, it promotes calcium excretion. But on the other hand, there are downsides. Because instead of yeast, a special sourdough starter is used, which is quenched with soda, and in some people with diseases, again, of the gastrointestinal tract, it can cause some discomfort. The next type of bread is bran bread. Here this bread is a good source of fiber. Fiber improves the motility of our intestines, contributes to its, let's say, on cleansing. Also fiber reduces cholesterol, nourishes beneficial microflora. So fiber is, of course, a must. But it should be understood that everything needs its measure. And if an adult needs 30 grams of fiber, it does not mean that if you eat 60 grams, it will be twice as good. No, it won't. That's where the opposite effect comes in. And if you eat more than 300 grams of bran bread every day, you can get some side effects such as, for example, abdominal bloating, stomach and intestinal discomfort, upsets, and things like that. So the first conclusion we can draw is that it is not recommended to eat white bread. And if you really like bread and do not plan to abandon it, then make a choice in favor of yeast-free or bran bread. But this is actually not all, because there are a number of nuances. For example, the famous gluten, or gluten. Very often you can hear that a glutenate is evil, that gluten must necessarily be abandoned and the like. Is it so? It should be said that indeed about 2% of the world's population have a very serious gluten intolerance, and these people really need to give up bread, but in general from any gluten-containing product. But there are still 98% who tolerate gluten, but they tolerate it differently. Someone tolerates it well, and someone has a hidden allergy, i.e. hidden gluten intolerance, and it is quite difficult to determine this hidden intolerance. 
One of the more or less simple ways is to give up any gluten-containing product for one month and see how you feel. Sometimes people get better, they feel more alert, sleep better, mood better, digestion better. But it means that there really was a hidden intolerance. Then it is worth refusing bread and any other dishes and products. And what is gluten or gluten? Why did it appear in nature and what does it give? In fact, it is, strangely enough, a natural poison. Cereal plants use gluten to deter insects from munching on it. That is, you see, a natural poison to repel insects that we consume in our food. Not surprisingly, many people do have a body rejection to this substance. The next thing worth mentioning is the artificial bleaching of flour. It must be said that white flour has always had a special value. It was considered the highest grade of flour. But if you calculate this whole thing, how much it costs the manufacturer, makes the conclusion much simpler, white flour artificially bleached. And so, unless he is particularly conscientious, this is what he will do. And how can this be done? With chlorine dioxide, or potassium bromate, very, very unhealthy chemical compounds to add to food. Thus, this is yet another argument to give up white bread. Let's summarize. If we do not eat white bread, but healthier alternatives, such as yeast-free or bran bread, and if we do not eat too much of it, i.e. not more than 150 grams per day, moreover, we know that we do not have gluten intolerance or latent gluten intolerance, and also we do not overdo the total calorie intake during the day, and also we do not have any adverse gastrointestinal events, it is all normally tolerated, then, most likely, we will not have any problems, and bread is safe for such people. If you like it, please eat it. But in all other cases, that is, if it is white bread, or if we eat a lot of bread, more than 150 grams per day, or if we really have some problems with digestion, then in these cases we should refuse bread. More information on this topic, you will find on our channel. Subscribe, please put a like and watch these useful videos. We look forward to your comments.